All right, Alexander, we had a meeting in Rome, Italy, between the United States and uh, China, and um, it, it didn't turn out too well. The, the readout, actually, from, I think it was the United States, was, was really, really short, which shows that uh, not much was done. But I think this meeting clocked in at, what was it, like seven hours, six, seven hours, and uh, no headway was made. The excuse that uh, the U.S. gave for for this meeting was this weapons story, which I think is BS. This Russia made a request to China to to get weapons, and Sullivan is sitting down with the Chinese to warn them. Anyway, I think I think it's BS, but it's a cover for for other diplomatic uh, goals that Sullivan wants to uh, accomplish. Anyway. Uh, what was your readout of this? Meeting? I think I think you're exactly correct. Now, this meeting was supposed to be that the way it was set up was that it was supposed to be a follow on to the summit meeting between Biden and C, the virtual summit meeting that happened uh, um, before the start of the year uh, last year. So this is supposed to be a meeting of the two national security advisors of the two presidents, uh, uh, um, uh, um, Yang Chi-chi, who's um, um, Xi Jinping's national security advisor and Jake Sullivan, who's of course um, Joe Biden's. In practice and in fact, it was really another attempt by the US to put pressure on China to try to get the Chinese to basically pull the rug from under the Russians in Ukraine. And it failed. And it failed completely. And now I'm going to quote directly from the Chinese media. Um, and it said, uh, and this is this is from an article by in Global Times. And it says, although the Ukraine issue was a priority for the US during Tuesday's meeting to pressurize China to take a stand, it seems that the attempt has been unsuccessful. Wu Xinbo, Dean of the Institute of International Studies, at Fudan University told Global Times. Not only did China's position remain unchanged, but it also refuted rumors and false information that the US has been spreading. It means that the goal of the US for this meeting has failed. So in other words, the US went into the meeting, and this is, you know, Global Times is very close to the Chinese government. The US went into this meeting trying to put the Chinese on the back foot by spreading this story about China agreeing to supply uh, uh, weapon systems or at least military technologies to the Russians to conduct this war in Ukraine, trying to get the Chinese to back off on their position of support for Russia, because essentially that's what the Chinese are doing, and um, trying to, in fact, make the entire meeting about Ukraine. And the Chinese didn't give an inch. <laughs> and they weren't they weren't intimidated by U.S. talk about sanctions. They didn't change their position. They didn't comprom compromise in the slightest. Instead, what they did was that they gave the U.S. a host of warnings about Taiwan, saying that the U.S. policies towards uh, about Taiwan are becoming inconsistent and dangerous. And, of course, flagging the possibility that at some point, some undisclosed point in the future, China may itself take military action with respect to Taiwan. So it, it was a debacle. It was a failure. The U.S. didn't get what it wanted. It has not been able to get the Chinese to change their position on Russia or on the conflict in Ukraine. There's been a sustained Western effort over the last few weeks to try to do that. And I've been reading in the Financial Times, which is very, very close to the Biden administration, that there's talk now that there's worries that something similar to the Sino-Soviet bloc of the 1950s is emerging. Well, that is, if I may say so, a recognition far too late in the day. I mean, if they'd been watching the news and studying things properly, they'd have understood that a long time ago. Except, of course, that the Russia-China combination of today is immeasurably more powerful and far more solid than the Sino-Soviet bloc of the 1950s ever was.
Yeah, I think that uh, that ship has sailed a long, long time a ago. A long time ago. I mean, God, are they late to the party there? Um, yeah. From uh, Sputnik News, Alexander, which is very hard to come by nowadays, but uh, in Yerevan, March 14th, the member states of the Eurasian Economic Union and China will develop a project for an independent international monetary and financial system. This was agreed upon by the participants in the economic dialogue, quote, a new stage of monetary, financial, and economic cooperation between the EAEU and the PRC. Um is it spooking the United States that uh, China is moving quicker and quicker towards de-dollarization? Yes, of course it is. It's, it's, it's absolutely horrified by this development because, bear in mind, China has a bigger industrial economy than the United States. It makes more things. And, of course, with the EAEU, the Russia, in other words, and the former Soviet republics, it is also going to be very rapidly, when all this is integrated, it's going to be self-sufficient in food and raw materials. So you were seeing an economic block that uh, um, develop with its own financial system, which is going to be entirely independent of the Western financial system, and which is larger in almost every measure than that of the US itself. Now, you can argue that if you put all the other parts of the collective West together, Europe, Japan, and all the rest, the US still has an advantage because the, you know, the collective West it would still be bigger economically than the Eurasian bloc. But the Eurasian bloc seems to be like the rising economic bloc. And China is, is manufacturing, looks likely to outpace the US. And bear in mind, if we go into recession, in the West, which we will, then, uh, and if China's economy continues to grow uh, over the next year or so, which it probably will, then, you know, that that difference between the US and China will actually increase. So it, it, it it's, it's probably going to spook them considerably. So then why is Sullivan, um, why is the United States making these threats to, to China? I mean, they're, they're threatening of sanctioning them if they support Russia. They're saying there, there's going to be repercussions. Why don't they find a way for, for some sort of rapprochement with China if their goal is to somehow uh, divide uh, these two countries? It just seems counterproductive. And that goes vis-a-vis -vis Russia, but also goes vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. I mean, yeah. there's, there's so much trade that happens between the U.S. and China. Why, why are they using the, the stick instead of the carrot? Because, of course, if they use the carrot then and things go on essentially as they are, then China's economy will continue to grow and um, eventually it will eclipse that of the US. And the whole game that's being played at the moment is to try to prevent that happening, to reassert the US's position as the, you know, the, the leading world power with a financial system constructed around it. Of course, when we talk about the US, we need to always understand we're talking about a globalised system. So the status quo is unacceptable. So they can't do the realist thing that you said, because that would mean accepting a status quo, which would eventually mean that the aggregate power of the Chinese economy and the Chinese system overtakes them. And at the same time, the policy of confrontation that they're actively pursuing is unsustainable also. You are right. A realist view would say, you know, China is going to become the bigger economy. It's probably going to establish itself at the centre of the world economic system, um, or at least a reconfigured economic system. But it would also say the United States will always remain, will remain immensely powerful, enormously rich. Its standard of living will continue to be much greater than that of China. So, and the real strengths of the United States are not in aggregate economic power, but in its constitutional and legal and political system. And China is not a military threat to the United States. So, in the nature of things, in the course of history, some countries rise economically, others, you know, take a secondary place. But the United States should be able to live with that 
and prosper and do well and its focus ought to be its own internal development and revisiting the urgent problems which it faces. That would be a realist perspective. That's the kind of perspective, however, that ideologues would, like Sullivan and people like that would call Trumpian, and they reject it because from their point of view, the United States has to be the leading power because if it's not, then it loses its purpose, its purpose being to promote globalization. Right. Because the, the stick doesn't seem to be working too well either. No. At least when you look no. at the Chinese readouts, they don't, the Chinese don't um, reply too kindly to, to, no. to the threats. No. That's, that's obvious. No. I've said it many times. The, the, the two absolute rules for anybody who wants to understand how to conduct themselves in the modern, in the modern world is don't march on Moscow, don't bluff Beijing. Bluffing Beijing will only mean your bluff gets called. <laughs> Sullivan, of course, doesn't doesn't see that. All right. Will Will China and uh, India find a way to uh, work together so that you can include India into this uh, power structure? I think you will. And obviously, India and China have very have had very tense relations going all the way back to the sixties. Though you know they've had good moments and bad moments and all kinds of things. But um, I think that the Indians, the Indian government has seen the Biden administration, doesn't like what it sees, has seen the atmosphere, the, this very heavy and fevered atmosphere that's gripped the West over these last few weeks. It doesn't like what it sees either. It also saw the catastrophic pullout by the US from Afghanistan. And I think that they're revisiting their, um, their decisions, their policies. And there was completely unreported in the Western media, a very successful meeting between the Chinese and the Indians a couple of days ago, in which they came to all kinds of agreements about de-escalating the tensions on their border. So, and remember, China is India's biggest trading partner. So it's highly likely, I think, that eventually these two big powers will come to terms with Russia, with which each has good relations, becoming possibly the bridge that will bring them together right okay so uh we'll uh we'll leave it there this this whole weapons request from from russia from from russia to china this this whole weapons thing is we shouldn't pay too much attention to that i don't think we should pay any attention to it i do I, i'm going to say straightforwardly i don't think it's true I mean, I really don't think it's true. I think that... Even if it is, is, is it that big a deal? Let it's not a big deal. That, even if it is. It's even, not a I big mean, deal. Turkey's throwing... I mean, God knows NATO mm. and even Turkey is no. supplying drones to Ukraine and you have NATO no, no, pumping in man pads, I hear, and, and all kinds yeah. of weapons to Ukraine. Is it no, no. even that big a deal? Even if no, it was of course true? It's not. Of course it's not a big deal. I mean, it's, no, it's no big deal at all. I mean, all it would show is, you know, that China and Russia are friends. Well, we know that anyway. I'm sure that isn't, it isn't true, though. Uh, and as you correctly said, it's no big deal. But it, in my opinion, it was just uh, uh, something that was um, brought up by Sullivan in advance uh, of the US, rather. The, the US brought it up in, in advance of this meeting on Monday in order to try to put the Chinese on a back foot to try to get the Chinese to start denying things and to try to distance themselves from the Russians and all that sort of thing. And of course, the Chinese, who are extremely experienced diplomats, they didn't bat an eye. And um, they just they just steamrolled ahead, said, you know, you know, we're not going to change our stance on Russia. We're not going to change our stance on Ukraine. We know all about what that is. We don't agree with your sanctions policy. We know that that's our considered position. What we care about is Taiwan. Yeah, okay, we'll uh, leave it there. Actually, one final question, real quick. What if, and they are crazy enough to do it, God knows they've done some crazy things, this Biden White House, destructive things. What if they decide to, to sanction China? Well, you know, you'd be looking at- Like they're at threatening that. to do, like they yeah, are threatening okay, okay. to do. You're not looking at 12% inflation, you're looking at 20% inflation or 25% inflation. <laughs> That's the reality. That's what they would do. I mean, 
Uh, again, it would be a problem for China in the short term. But I mean, they would they would adjust to it. I mean, I, I doubt it. But God, I never thought they would uh, go after a central bank no. <laughs> of a G I, of a G twenty nation either. I know. So I mean, who knows? I, mean, I know. Who knows? Yeah. And they went after the Russian central bank without even telling the Fed they were going to, which yeah. is. So astonishing! Sure. It just, you know, that left me speechless when I, when I had that confirmed. So you know, they might do it. I mean, they, 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 you know, they, they, these people are are able to do extraordinary things. So they might do it. But you know, if they do it, well, you know, we're going to have even more problems. I mean, just just think of the number of things you buy now that are made in China. Think of the number of things that use things <laughs> that are made in China. I mean, the, the supply chain crisis, I mean, would just be off the scale. Yeah. All right, we'll uh, leave it there, everybody. Uh, the Duran.locals.com. And if you're watching this from Rumble, you'll see a button, which will take you to our Locals page, right on the top of the page. Just click that button. You'll go straight to our Locals community and go to the Duran shop. Use the code Good day and get 10% off all merch. There's the mug. Good day. Take care.